Content Introduction When Roland crossed Middle-earth with the Lord of the Rings system, Gandalf was organizing an expedition, and the king at the foot of the mountain had not yet returned to his throne. The Hobbit adventure had not yet begun, and the world was still shrouded in shadows. Author Dragon God Gon Sia wrote The Lord of the Rings. Middle Earth Without a Pop. Up Window. The full text of The Lord of the Rings can be read as a reprinted work chapter published by Netizens. Recommended Address Chapter 1 Coming to Middle Earth. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Coming to Middle Earth I'm Going, What's This Place? Roland was originally playing, The Lord of the Rings, on the computer, but in a flash, the computer took him to this place where birds don't poop. GGGG. A piercing scream came, which frightened Roland. He quickly turned around to look around, but Roland lowered his head and was stunned. At this moment, he was wearing the Lord's precious gold armor from the Lord of the Rings, with an epic weapon, the dragon slaying sword, and a precious gold tower shield on his back, I'll go. Isn't this the equipment from my Lord of the Rings? Roland looked at the unfamiliar equipment all over her body, and her brain suddenly crashed. Am I traveling to Middle Earth within the Lord of the Rings? Roland pondered. As a result, Roland was saddened to find that if it were the Middle Earth in the movie Lord of the Rings, it would be better, and if it were the Lord of the Rings in a computer game. Roland said he could dig a pit and lie down on his own now. The Lord of the Rings is a game that has been modified based on movies like The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. It incorporates a series of magical elements such as war energy and magic, and changes the Middle-earth map and power distribution. Except for some main characters that remain unchanged, almost everything else has been modified. Roland is so anxious, ggg. Several short green goblins in the bushes jumped out, holding bone sticks and iron axes, which were considered weapons. I'll go. The Lord of the Rings has been hammered. Roland saw that it was the most recognizable wilderness goblin among the Lord of the Rings. Chang. Roland drew the dragon slaying sword from her waist and took a shield from behind to block her in front of her. Goblin rushed forward with a groan, his weak arms waving inferior weapons and weakly striking the precious gold shield. Ha! Roland shouted angrily, and a golden training flash instantly dismembered several goblins. Sure enough. Roland felt the surging fighting energy in his body. He should be at the level of a grand knight, undoubtedly in the world of the Lord of the Rings. The levels of extraordinary power are divided into Apprentice Knight, Knight, Grand Knight, Knight Captain, and Knight Commander and various other extraordinary professions are divided into five levels. Forcefully enduring the discomfort in her stomach, Roland turned her head to no longer look at the fragmented goblin on the ground. She withdrew her sword from its scabbard and had to say that the dragon-slaying sword was truly a good sword, with non-sticky and exceptionally sharp drops of blood, a small battle to test one's skills. Completed. Reward. Fully armed Char Warhorse Asterisk 1. Stored in the Lord of the Rings space. Roland's ring suddenly heated up, and a light curtain appeared in front of her. The Lord of the Rings system. I'll go. This thing has all come with me. It's developed. Roland exclaimed excitedly. With this thing, he can build his own country and become a lord with various rewards. After all, the land in the Lord of the Rings is too big, and most places are deserted. Back in the game, countless players established territories in the wilderness, becoming one after another dominant lords. After understanding the usage method, Roland took out the fully armed Shirma from the ring. After all, cavalry had an advantage over infantry in the wilderness, and could a knight without a warhorse be called a knight? Good guy. It's really fully armed. Roland looked at the Shirma, who was wearing three layers of armor, helplessly. This thing should be used by heavy cavalry, right? Look at the steel chain armor that extends to the calf of the warhorse. Roland suspected that if it weren't for the Shirma with super negative gravity, other warhorses would have to lie down for a few kilometers. 
Okay, it's just that we're not afraid of small dot scale orcs now. Roland cheered herself, after all, orcs also have a bit of survival desire. Who would plunder a fully armed grand knight if they had nothing to do? The Lord of the Rings, tell me what I need next. Roland tried to ask the Lord of the Rings. Dot. Well, it seems that the purpose of this ring is to achieve rewards. It should only be rewarded for every task done that meets the reward criteria, Roland muttered to himself. So now I should find a place to settle down. After all, it's getting dark, maybe I should find some food. Tomorrow I should set off to look for the town and village. God knows where I am now. Roland said helplessly, covering her head. After collecting some dead branches along the way, Roland rode aimlessly, hoping to find a few inconspicuous orcs to pass the time. That's it. Roland looked at the interlocking stones in front of her, forming a small stone cave of over ten square meters below. Roland decided to spend the night here. So. How do we start the fire? Roland suddenly froze. I wipe it. I should have watched more wilderness survival programs before. Roland said bitterly as she looked at a pile of dry wood in front of her. How about trying to drill wood to start a fire? I'll go. There's no movement. Oh. It's smoking. Damn it. My hands. Get out of here. Go to Tima. Roland completely collapsed, looking at the gradually darkening wilderness, he was extremely depressed. No way. The fire must be lit. The wilderness at night is not friendly, Roland encouraged herself. Finally, before the sky was about to turn dark, a small pile of sparks illuminated Roland's face. With cramped hands, Roland carefully placed the fire velvet in the dense pile of dead branches. Ah! Praise the light! Roland danced as she watched the fire. The first pile of fire. Completed. Rewards. 100 loaves of bread, 100 water. Distributed to the Lord of the Rings space. Ha! Huh. I've given you a reward. Now you don't have to worry about food and drink, Roland laughed. Long bread is the type of bread that is half a meter long and one palm wide, while water comes in bags, each bag weighing about one liter. Roland baked the bread on the fire, took out a water bag and took a few sips for herself. When the bread was burnt yellow and emitted a wheat aroma, Roland took it off the fire and chewed it heavily. After leading the horse into the stone cave, Roland began to unbutton the horse's vest under the lighting of the fire. While unbuttoning, he praised the excellent quality of the system shipment. After all, through the fire, you can see that the vest chain links are fine and lightweight, and must be made of high dot quality alloy steel. With his vest casually placed in the system space, Roland leaned his shield against his side and drew out the dragon slaying sword. He lay down against his warhorse, looking at the bright starry sky, a lonely thought rushed to his face. Hee hee, the first night of Middle Earth, good night. Roland muttered to herself. Outside the entrance of the cave, the fire swayed gently in the evening breeze. What Roland didn't know was that the light of the fire could not only dispel wild beasts but also attract unwelcome visitors. Puff. Charles's warhorse snorted anxiously. Shallow Roland, who was already asleep, was awakened by the sound. He turned over and leaned his shield against his left shoulder, while his right hand drew out his long sword and looked out of the cave with caution. Oh. Shit. Fake. Blue Pool. Roland had ten thousand languages to express her feelings at this moment. Damn it. What a special terrestrial dragon. Roland wailed. Chapter 2. Dragon Slaying. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 2 Dragon Slaying, I hope the Dragon Slaying Sword can really slay dragons. Roland sighed. As a type of Asian dragon, the Earth Dragon is infinitely close to the dragon species, second only to the Flying Dragon in Bloodline. It inherits the strong hand-to-hand -hand combat ability and scorching dragon breath of the Dragon Clan, 
and can easily destroy a small army. Roland couldn't sit idly by. He quickly pulled the warhorse out of the cave, casually saddled it, and as for wearing a vest. He could only pray for himself to survive first. Fortunately, the trained Char warhorse was not intimidated by Yalong's dragon power, ruling out the possibility of the warhorse suddenly falling off its chain during the battle. Perhaps it was this that made Roland feel that he could compete with the ground dragon. Drive. Roland clenched his horse's belly and handed his sword forward. Roar. The ground dragon opened its big mouth and rushed towards Roland. I'll wipe it. Roland pulled the reins over the horse's head, narrowly avoiding the bloody jaws that passed by. Evil beast. Look at the sword. Roland immediately turned back with a sword. Ah! Accompanied by the dragon's chant, a bundle of scorching dragon blood was carried out along with the tip of the sword. Sure. Surprisingly, it can pierce through dragon scales. Roland exclaimed in surprise. Ow! With a backhand strike, he made another cut on the dragon's leg. The ground dragon roared and twisted its body under the pain of eating, with its thick steel tail running horizontally and vertically. However, Sharma skillfully avoided the sweeping steel tail. Bang! The huge dragon head turned and a thick pillar of fire brushed past Roland. I'll go. I almost ran out of people. Roland said in fear. Even Roland felt the deadly high temperature through the refined gold plate armor. Ha! Roland held his sword fiercely with both hands, and suddenly a strong force came from the hilt, almost making Roland unable to grip the long sword with both hands. Good guy. Good sword. Roland exclaimed in shock. It turned out that the steel tail that the ground dragon had just swept over was subconsciously blocked by Roland with a dragon slaying sword, and the sweeping dragon tail was actually cut off with one knife. Ah! The angry ground walking dragon was angered by the ant on horseback and began to attack with dragon breath. The scorching dragon yen ignited the withered trees around him and suddenly lit up in all directions. Roland finally saw the huge creature, which was at least ten meters long, with a bloody mouth on its head the size of a door panel, filled with dagger long dragon teeth. Its thick and strong limbs were covered in hard dragon scales, it's really big. Roland exclaimed at the wonder of the creator. Bang! In a moment of trance, Roland was knocked off his horse with a severed tail, and was immediately taken off his horse's back. Roland rolled sideways at the moment of landing, avoiding the dragon's mouth, and then rolled several times to avoid stepping on his own dragon claws. After flipping over the operation, Roland was pleasantly surprised to find that he had actually crawled into the belly of a ground dragon. Roland joyfully threw his sword up and then moved his body down against the ground, spraying dragon blood all over Roland's body. Damn it! Not good! Roland's face suddenly changed. He suddenly remembered the weight of the earth dragon, which weighed several tons. If it were to be pressed down. Roland was scared and broke into a cold sweat. After drilling out of the dragon's belly a few times, Roland finally confirmed his victory. Fortunately, he successfully made a nearly three-meter-long incision under the dragon's belly. In other words, the dragon was doomed. Leaving the struggling ground dragon, Roland found his warhorse not far away. The warhorse stood quietly waiting for Roland, but did not take advantage of the chaos to escape, which made Roland very happy. Yalong Hunter Completed You have successfully demonstrated your courage and strength. Reward the Flying Dragon Knight Asterisk 1. You can summon it at any time. The Lord of the Rings did not remain silent. Flying Dragon Knight. Roland's pupils narrowed. This thing should be the second most powerful unit flying in the sky, right? The first thing is that the Dragon Knight can't run. I just don't know what kind of flying dragon this is. As the lowest level of the pure blood dragon tribe, there are many varieties of flying dragons, just like the giant flame flying dragon smog in the Hobbit people, which is even more exaggerated in size than a giant dragon. 
The real giant dragon is not particularly huge in size, but if the two fight, Smog will definitely be crushed, summon. Roland's mood at this moment was like opening a blind box. Lord. See you, Castro. A young blonde knight appeared in front of Roland, even Roland, who had experienced the era of the information explosion, couldn't help but exclaim in admiration for his handsomeness. How old are you? Roland said as she looked at her raw face. Dear sir, I am eighteen years old this year. Castro said respectfully. Good guy. Bigger than myself. Roland was only sixteen years old before his time traveling, so everyone is a brother. By the way, your level, and most importantly, where is your dragon? Roland asked curiously. Dear sir, I now possess the strength of a grand knight. As for my dragon, it is in the dragon flute. Castro said respectfully. Wipe. The 18. Year. Old Grand Knight will definitely be able to touch the position of Knight Commander in the future, and there is hope to reach another level. Heroes. Just as the ultimate of a wizard is a sage, the ultimate of a knight is a hero. Summon your dragon. Let me take a look, Roland ordered. Okay, sir. Castro took out the dragon flute from his collar and played it. Soon, a blue flying dragon about fifteen meters long broke through the air. Well, the wind belongs to the quadrupedal flying dragon. It's pretty good, at least not a bottom-line item like the bipedal flying dragon, Roland said with satisfaction. Four-legged flying dragons, as the name suggests, are the genus of flying dragons with four legs. They resemble giant dragons and are considered to have a good lineage. They possess simple dragon language magic and melee abilities, but their breathing and melee abilities are slightly weaker than those of giant dragons. The way to distinguish them from giant dragons is to look at their head crowns. They do not have complex dragon horn decorations like giant dragons, only simple bony head crowns. People who are not familiar with them often think that four-legged flying dragons are young giant dragons. Although for ordinary people, their destructive power is not much different. All right, put it away, Roland said lightly. Although having a flying dragon knight is a proud thing, in the Middle Earth world after being demonized, one still needs to be careful. It is not too sour to expose the consequences of having a flying dragon knight under one's command too early before having a fixed territory and influence. The biggest consequence is that major forces hunt and kill their own flying dragon knights and seize the dragon flute. Flying dragons are not uncommon, but why are flying dragon knights and dragon knights so scarce? There are also many dragon eggs that the human race can steal, but they can never cultivate a few dragon knights. The reason is the dragon flute. The dragon flute is the most important prop of the contracted dragon clan. Without the dragon flute contract, a dragon knight cannot be considered a true dragon knight. The dragon flute gives the knight space to carry the dragon knight, allowing the knight to summon their seated dragon to cross the space and come to their side. These are all the magical effects of the dragon flute. As for the method of making the dragon flute, it has long been lost. You should walk first. Roland sighed, realizing that he was jealous. Castro was the real knight, equipped with a pure gold dragon armor, a pure gold dragon shield, a secret silver long sword, a pure gold dragon spear, a dragon bone wood long bow, and a star silver iron made war hammer, all of which could be considered fully armed. And besides being covered in armor, I only have a sword and a shield after dealing with the body of the earth dragon and packing all the useful materials into the endless space of the Lord of the Rings, Roland led his horse back to the cave and lay down to sleep again. After all, under the intimidation of the dragon's power, no warcraft or beast dared to stab. Chapter 3 Finally figured out the place. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Finally figured out the place, are you full? Roland clapped her hands and asked. I have eaten well, sir, said Castro. Let's go then, hoping to find a village or town today and figure out where we are. Roland sighed. Okay sir, Castro replied. Sir. 
We may be in trouble. Suddenly, Castro grabbed Roland's horse head. This is the feces of the Gundaba wolf. Castro explained. So. Roland's face looked ugly. That's right, there are wolf cavalry from orcs around. Damn it. Watch out. Suddenly Roland raised the tower shield. Bang. An iron arrow was thrown away by a shield. Castro. Summon your dragon. Go up. Quick. Roland exclaimed in surprise. In the distant forest, shadows intertwined, and among the swaying branches, half-orcs rode out on wolves, with a continuous stream of half-orc infantry behind them. Sir. We should have entered a half-orc territory. Castro said bitterly, quickly taking out the dragon flute and summoning the flying dragon. For the glory of knights. Charge. The war aura surged, urging Roland, who was covered in war aura and with his warhorses, to drive the draped charma towards the hundreds of orc armies. Miso. Roland slashed off an ugly half-orc's head with a sword. Bang. Roland's tower shield blocked the curved sword that was being cut at him, and he casually stabbed it with a sharp dragon slaying sword, which easily pierced through the half-orc's chest. Ong. The passionate dragon chant sounded. Castro rode a flying dragon and took off. The orc army was noticeably stunned for a moment, allowing Roland to take advantage of the opportunity and chop off a few more heads. The next second, a wind blade several meters wide was spit out from the dragon's mouth and quickly turned into a palm-long wind blade. The dozen or so orc wolf cavalry, who were enveloped by the wind blade, were quickly strangled and killed along with their seat wolves, causing Roland to feel nauseous. The obscure dragon language sounded, and upon hearing it, Roland immediately turned the horse's head and ran away. Good guy, stay within the range of the dragon language magic release. How hard does it take to think about it in order to do such a thing? I saw the wings of the wind wing flying dragon swing, and suddenly a tornado was blown out, becoming thicker and stronger. The tornado moved forward and nearly half of the orcs were sucked up by the tornado and thrown up to a hundred meters high, then rained down one after another, roar. Castro drove the flying dragon chasing the orcs, and wind blades fell from the sky one after another to dismember the orcs below. Roland, who followed below, could only stare at the corpses all the way, without even a chance to repair them. After all, the orcs on the ground were either dismembered or turned into pieces, which was very cruel. Finally, the last half-orc was blasted to ashes at the edge of the forest, and Castro fell from the sky satisfied. Sir, it's all resolved. Well, come on, put away the dragon. You ride on this. Roland pointed to a nearby charmer horse, which was the first drop of blood achievement just rewarded by the system. Not a single blade of grass grows. Completed. Successfully eliminated the orcs without leaving any. Reward fully armed apprentice knights asterisk 10. Roland has seen the final reward and is still very satisfied, after all, the apprentice knights with extraordinary power are stronger than the most powerful cavalry, and there are a total of 10, most importantly. Fully armed. Sure enough, after summoning these ten apprentice knights, Roland felt so fragrant. The Shirma, with three layers of armor in one color, is equipped with refined steel plate armor, refined steel cross shield, refined steel long sword, refined steel cavalry gun, iron and wood bow, and a secret silver fighting hoe, specifically used to break armor and deal with iron cans with accuracy, that is truly armed to the teeth. The most impressive thing is that they all have cloaks behind them, and the dragon emblem on their own refined gold armor is on the cloak. A group of twelve people appears majestic and domineering. Five days later, I wipe, is this the village? Roland thought her eyes were blurred. Yes, sir. It's a village, but it doesn't seem very friendly to us. Castro said as he looked at the closed wooden gate and the militiamen climbing up the wall to guard. With his sharp gaze, Castro could even see that their hands had already fastened the bowstrings of their hunting bows. Oh. God. 
Guys, put away your weapons and relax. Roland ordered. After hearing this, everyone put away their weapons one after another. Roland rode towards the village gate and looked at the villagers above. Excuse me, we are just travelers. We hope to find a place to stay and we can pay, Roland said sincerely. Really? Where do you come from, outsiders? Said an elderly villager above. Well, I come from an empire in the east, and these people are the servants I recruited in Gundor, said Roland, taking off his helmet. Sure enough, looking at Roland with black hair and eyes, the villagers above began to discuss. After a while, the people above should have finished discussing. Sure, you can come in and rest, but we hope you don't use weapons to fight in the village and don't disturb the villagers. As you wish, we are willing to comply, Roland quickly agreed. Creak. The wooden door was slowly pushed open, and Roland quickly called everyone to dismount and enter. As soon as I entered, Roland had a guess in her heart. I'm afraid I'm not in Charles. Roland muttered to himself, as he noticed a row of small dwarves standing in front of him, more accurately, hobbits or the most familiar, hobbits. Hello, could you please ask where this is? We lost our way on the wilderness. Roland quickly grabbed a person to inquire. After a thorough investigation, it can be confirmed that Roland is currently in the northernmost part of Char, and it is not the Middle-earth continent in the movie, but the continent in the Lord of the Rings. That's easy, I'm familiar with the map of the Lord of the Rings. Roland rubbed her chin. By the way, what era is it now? Go and inquire about it, Castro. Okay, sir. What? Year 2940 of the Third Age. Roland exclaimed in surprise. What's wrong, sir? Caslow asked with concern. There's something very interesting, I'm considering whether we should get involved. Roland refers to the Dwarven Expedition, which is the plot of the Hobbits. Solon Oak Shield is also a good friend. If you want to establish a foothold in this land, you still need to unite these forces that can be recruited, Roland muttered to himself. Because it is a modified Middle Earth, the power system inside has undergone significant changes, with the most important being the lack of gods. With numerous spellcasters, at least more than the original Middle Earth world with only five wizards, no one knows the outcome of this expedition. After all, in the game, many Lord players led teams to help Sorin and his team successfully recapture the Lonely Mountain. Let's go. Go to Hobbiton. Roland finally decided to lend a hand. Chapter 4 Bilbo Baggins You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Bilbo Baggins, Drive The hurried sound of horse hooves shattered the tranquility of Hobbiton, and twelve fully armed knights appeared on the path of Hobbiton. The young knight scolded his attendants, Castro, are you sure this is the way? Yes, well, I mean maybe. After all, you understand adults. The country roads here are too winding, the flying dragon knight Caslow stuttered. Am I special? Are you all trash? Roland couldn't help but curse. Oh, I'm sorry, brothers, I didn't mean that, Roland quickly apologized, noticing that the wording was inappropriate. Let's continue asking for directions and see where the damn hole at the bottom of the bag is, Roland said dejectedly. Hi. Excuse me, friend. Do you know where Bill Baggins lives? Roland asked everyone passing by. After questioning without success, Roland couldn't help but complain, who really said that hobbits are passionate. Hello, do you know Bill Baggins? Roland asked a hobbit sitting in the yard by the roadside. Baggins. What are you looking for him for? The young man exclaimed in surprise. Well, because. Well, the situation is like this. After a while, a group of dwarves and a wizard will find him, and I want to find that group of dwarves. Roland explained. Okay, I am, but the dwarves didn't see me. The wizard came today and he wanted me to adventure with him. What's even funnier is to make me a thief. I don't even know how to fight, explained Bilbo Baggins. 
Ah. Roland was stunned. She had been pinching her hands so well during this time. Thinking of this, Roland couldn't help but sympathetically glanced at Bilbo and thought to herself that his inventory was going to be poor tonight. The thirteen dwarves will empty his storage room tonight. Roland glanced at the corner of his front door and smiled at him, saying, So, Mr. Baggins, see you tonight. Um, sir, do you mean you will be visiting me tonight? Bilbo was surprised. Yes, just prepare my own food, my attendants won't come. Oh by the way, my name is Roland. Roland smiled kindly. Okay, sir, welcome to visit tonight. The Bonds of Fate Achieved Reward 90 Apprentice Knights You can summon them at any time. Roland's long silent ring finally came to life. 90 Knights Plus these 10 there are a hundred probationary knights, and now the next knightly order has come together. Roland wanted to laugh heartily at the moment. I found a corner and summoned the knights. Roland quickly used the system reward coins to package a larger hotel, ready to be used for the night for the attendants. The crisp sound of horse hooves came, and Roland couldn't help but marvel at the high efficiency of the system, and there were no worries about it. These knights were all rushed from the wilderness, and no one knew they were summoned. Watching the gradually fading sky, Roland brought Caslow to take charge of arranging the knights under his command, while he himself was going to the banquet. Ding ding ding. Roland rang the doorbell in the bottom hole of the bag. Bang. As soon as the door opened, a scent of food mixed with various chaotic sounds came from the dwarves, indicating that they had already started to have a party Roland couldn't help but twitch at the corner of her eyes as she looked at the messy room, wondering whether or not to step in. She lowered her head and saw Bilbo's dejected gaze. Mr. Roland, do you know something? And I'm sorry for the food I prepared for you. Mr. Baggins said awkwardly. Don't worry about Bilbo, it's okay, Roland comforted Baggins before stepping in. Upon entering the door, Roland recognized Gandalf, as his robe and staff clearly betrayed his identity. Dear Mr. Gandalf, hello. Roland paid his respects. Should I call you Solon Oak Shield or should I call you the king at the foot of the mountain? Roland looked at the king among the dwarves calmly. Obviously, Roland's words stimulated Solon, and he stood up with his fist clenched. Hey, Soren. Take it easy. Gandalf quickly blocked him. Young man, I can't see through you. Gandalf said in surprise. Roland smiled indifferently and asked Sorin, the bloodline of Turin, the grandson of Thor, the son of Thorn. Can you still be called the king of the mountains now? Bang! Sorin slammed the table and was about to jump out and fight Roland. Everyone quickly dragged him down, and his nephew Chili stood up. Sir, excuse me, did you come here on purpose to cause trouble? The other dwarves also looked at him with a gloomy expression, only Gandalf looked at him thoughtfully. Seeking trouble. You're not worthy yet, I just don't want to see the end of the Turin bloodline. Roland knew the plot well, even if they could win, the Turin bloodline would surely come to an end. With the help of the Lord of the Rings, Roland successfully sensed the crowd present. Except for Sorin, who was a berserker, everyone else was either a trainee warrior or a warrior. This lineup was not enough for Roland's knights to charge forward. The professional level of a warrior is Apprentice warrior, warrior, berserker, commander, warrior, and the ultimate professional bully. Fart. Nonsense. Everyone blamed Roland one after another, and Gandalf's gaze at Roland became even more surprised. Enough. State your purpose. Sorin suddenly shouted to stop his subordinates' accusations. Kwai Kwai, truly a descendant of Turin. I am the captain of the Knights of the Holy Glory, and now I need to find a territory to lead my knights to settle down, so you know. I need money. Roland calmly expressed his demands. What? The knights. Oh my goodness. He actually has a knightly order. 
The dwarves were extremely surprised, only Gandalf's expression became increasingly confused. Mr. Roland. This joke is not funny. Do you know under what circumstances can you be called the knights? Solon asked solemnly. Of course, I am just the weakest knights under my command, with one hundred apprentice knights and a knight captain, Roland said arrogantly. So. What do you mean? Soren's tone also softened, after all, everyone has common interests and everything can be discussed. I will lead my knights to battle. Escort you all the way to Lonely Mountain. And you will need to pay a commission. If there are casualties, you will also need to pay a pension. Of course, if you fail to recapture Eric in the end. Then you don't need to pay anything. Roland's eyes flickered with a flame called ambition. If you agree, then I can summon my attendants now. Roland continued. Soren lowered his head in contemplation, and Gandalf quietly pulled him, whispering in his ear, Promise him, there are too many risks along the way. With the protection of a knightly order, we can arrive safer. After hearing Gandalf's whispers, Soren nodded and lifted his head, saying loudly, Mr. Roland, I'll draft the contract now. After speaking, Roland began writing contracts with the dwarves under his command, and then Roland saw a contract that was even longer than the one Mr. Baggins had received from the snitch, a large volume, so, wish us a smooth expedition. Roland signed the contract, put it away and nodded to everyone, then declined Bilbo's request and walked out. By the way, tomorrow morning, I will wait for you at the edge of the forest. Roland's voice came from afar. Chapter 5 The Attack of Orcs You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 The Attack of Orcs Lonely Mountain Expedition Team Joined Reward 10 Badenian Archers Recruitable at any time Puff Roland almost choked to death with his saliva. What did he see? Ba Gong, known as the strongest archer in horseback riding and chopping, has been greatly modified. After summoning these ten marksmen, Roland couldn't help but marvel, ah. It's really fragrant. First of all, let's talk about the high-dot-level Yapi and archer professions, which are divided into. Apprentice archer, archer, divine archer, hawkeye archer, sniper, and the highest level star hunter. After looking at the equipment again, Roland couldn't help but admire it. It was too luxurious. The secret silver inner armor jacket was inlaid with silver lock armor, and he held the secret silver purple shirt bow in his hand. He carried fifty star silver steel armor piercing arrows on his back, a secret silver fighting sword hanging on his waist, and a pair of precision steel arm shields on his left hand. The most outrageous thing was that he carried a one meter long precision steel armor piercing hammer. Fortunately, he was wearing lock armor, and if he changed to plate armor, he could become a heavy infantry commander. Roland wanted to hold them and ask if they had forgotten their job. They were doing this. It hurts the melee heavy armor profession a lot as a result, this group of people may have noticed Roland's confusion and didn't say anything. They raised their bows and fired a bow alone in the dark night, and then brought back eleven startled birds, all of which were supposed to be added to Roland's meal. As for why it was eleven, it was because an arrow pierced through two birds. Then Roland shut up, never mentioning whether these people had forgotten their job or anything else. In the early morning, Roland waited with people outside the woods of Hobbiton, with one hundred apprentice knights under his command forming a neat formation, and ten Badenian archers also riding fully armed char warhorses produced by the system. Now they looked more like heavy knights. Roland had no intention of taking care of them anymore. Setting aside the prominent long bow, he thought these goods were melee units just by looking at their attire, hi. Guys. I've been waiting for you for a long time. Finally, Roland saw the figure of the expedition team, Shan Shan Lai Chi. One, two, three. Fourteen, it's great. Bilbo still hasn't come. Roland nodded as he counted the people. Just like in the movie, Mr. Bilbo from last night hasn't decided to join, but he should be on his way here now. 
Are everyone here? Are we waiting for Mr. Baggins? Roland asked. No, everyone is here, he won't come. Soren said decisively. Hey, Mr. Roland, your army is so majestic. The dwarves praised, even Gandalf cast a surprised look. Thank you for the compliment. But I think Bilbo will still come. Roland said the latter half of the sentence to Solon. But it's okay, he can catch up with us. Roland glanced at Hobbiton and muttered to himself, after all, hobbits are famous for being good at running. Oh. The god of forging is above. Surprisingly, its secret silver, refined gold, and star silver steel, suddenly Philip exclaimed. Oh, buddy, I spent a lot of money on their equipment, otherwise I wouldn't have been as poor as I am now. Roland said lightly. Everyone chose to believe it, after all, how could they possibly know about such an unreliable system? Hey! Wait! Wait! Suddenly, a voice rushed from far to near, like Bilbo Baggins. The Badenian archer immediately raised his long bow, and several knights from behind also raised their cavalry guns, preparing to nail the fast-running dwarf to the ground. Oh! Master Baggins! All right, put down your weapon and be your own person. Roland looked at the appearance of Bilbo with a sudden expression. Oh! Hello Mr. Roland, Mr. Solon, I have signed it. After greeting Roland, Bilbo quickly raised the contract as a gesture. Hmm, it's accurate. Several dwarves gathered around to take a look and announced to everyone that there were no issues. So welcome to become the fourteenth member of the expedition team. Solon opened his arms. Fourteenth place. Wait, then they. Bilbo pointed at Roland and they said incredulously. We can be considered mercenaries, Mr. Baggins. Roland explained. They'll get another share of the reward, Gandalf said. Wizard, how do we get there? Roland asked. Take Dongfang Avenue, then climb over the Misty Mountains, and finally take Old Forest Road along the fast-flowing Hebei to reach the Solitary Mountain. It sounds good, but the journey will definitely not be peaceful. Roland looked into the distance. Alas this journey is destined to be full of danger, Roland thought to himself. Knowing the plot well, he knew that he would encounter many orcs later, and even a battle of the Fifth Army. Your Majesty, your army surprised me. I don't seem to have seen their armor before, asked Solon, who was walking alongside Roland. Well, I am a human from the east, and this is the unique plate armor of our homeland. We were defeated in the battle against the Dongi tribe, and our tribe began to wander in the north. Roland quickly found an excuse, after all, the plate armor from the system and the armor from Middle-earth had a huge difference in style, and each one they wore was a tin can. That is to say, the lock armor on the Badenian archer's body can work normally, and the plate armor on the knight's body is more like Milan's plate armor in the previous life. Sir! Enemies are approaching us. It's orcs. A Badenian archer in charge of reconnaissance galloped his horse, bringing the bad news to everyone. Did you see clearly? How many people are there? Roland quickly asked. There are about three hundred people. Sir, I think we should gather the knights now, after all, the power of the knights' order mainly comes from the charge of the group. Let the knights move, otherwise we who are separated would be the best targets. Castro rode his horse to Roland's side and advised, understanding that Roland did not want him to show off his identity as a flying dragon knight. Gather the knights. Crush them with our iron hooves. Roland said fiercely, after all, he has soldiers in his hands now and his heart is not panicked. Sure enough, in no time, hundreds of orcs rushed out of the forest in chaos, waving various broken weapons and charging towards everyone. Roland even saw a fecal fork inside, who, Gandalf let out a long breath. Fortunately, it's not the orc army from the Misty Mountains. Don't be too happy too early, maybe our whereabouts and goals have been exposed long ago. Roland poured cold water over. Charge! Crush them! 
Roland drew his dragon-slaying sword and charged out first. With the urging of the apprentice knights, various types of battle aura covered the warhorses, armor, and weapons. As the knights charged, they gradually merged their aura into a hole, with almost half a meter long battle aura protruding from each person's weapon. This is the difference between knights and cavalry. The knights released their battle aura during the charge to connect themselves with other knights as a whole. As long as the battle aura was not completely depleted, they will share the damage together and receive a battle aura bonus from the knights. At this moment, they are the knights known as the King of Land War. Bang! Accompanied by various dull collisions and the tearing sound of long spears entering the body, the vanguard of the knights and the orcs collided. Roland, along with his knights, wielded weapons and manipulated the warhorses to shred the dozen or so orcs facing him cleanly. Behind them, ten Badenian archers also raised their purple robe wooden bows. As soon as they raised their hands, one orc fell to the ground with an arrow in its eye socket or throat. All the orcs charging around the knights were thrown to the ground by these ten people. So aren't you planning to help a Badenian archer asked as he looked at the stunned group. Ah. Kill. The dwarf, who had reacted, was startled and quickly wielded weapons such as axes, swords, and hammers to greet them. Only Bilbo remained in place at a loss, while Gandalf picked up his staff and recited a spell. The next second, a head-sized fireball swept over the heads of the crowd and hit the rear of the half-beasts. Beautiful. Finally, you're not the battle mage from the movie, Roland said to herself after looking at Gandalf in surprise. Chapter 6 Burying You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Burying After a fierce battle, the remaining half-orcs crawled towards the forest, and Roland decisively stopped chasing. He gathered his knights and planned to continue his journey with everyone. Encounter Battle Completed Reward one royal guard paladin of Lagrange. Can be summoned at any time. Wokeo. Roland excitedly almost called out the name of some mysterious plant. The Lagrange royal guard paladin is one of the most impressive units in the Lord of the Rings, but it is only now the third age. The Lagrange royal guard paladin only appeared in the game in the fifth age, second only to various super professions such as dragon knights. They barely managed to gather enough troops to form a knightly order, but in reality, they did not even reach the lowest hundred-member knightly order. At the peak of the number, there were only 87 people, and after the Battle of Jiliu River, the number of people was less than 50, and the formation almost broke up. The most famous feature of this legion is its attribute. Saint. The entire knight's order is composed entirely of true paladins, rather than using the Knights of Light as paladins like the Vatican Knights Order. Moreover, the Knights under its command are of extremely high quality, and most of the Knights, collectively known as the Royal Guard of Lagrange by outsiders, are actually of the level of Grand Knights. Even a small part of them are paladins, and the leader, Larousse, is a sacred hero. Secondly, the equipment of this legion is so luxurious that it is infuriating. Its entire body is forged with dragon blood holy steel, refined steel quenched with the dragon blood of the sacred dragon, including a full-body dragon armor, dragon pattern sword, dragon spear, and dragon shield, as well as an Asian dragon bow that uses the Asian dragon main tendon as the string and the Asian dragon arm bone to polish the bow arm. You can only see the same equipment on the dragon knight. Even elite classes like the Heavenly Horse Knight and the Griffin Knight cannot compare to him. Therefore, there is a famous saying that the Dragon Knight governs the sky and the Holy Knight governs the earth. Now Roland actually has a Raglan Royal Guard Paladin in his hands. Roland is so moved that he almost cries. He suspects that the Lord of the Ring system is using his longevity to draw prizes. Strictly speaking, the number of Raglan Royal Guard Paladins is not as many as the Flying Dragon Knights. It should be noted that when Roland logs into the Lord of the Rings, many lords have Flying Dragon Knights under their command, and even the Dragon Knights can form a Knight Order, the organization of the Dragon Knight Order is different from that of a regular Knight Order.
And the number of Dragon Knights in a Dragon Knight order is only 50 because the Dragon Knights are too rare to gather enough to bring in the entire continent's Dragon Knights. How many players want to recruit, lure? Recruiting, kidnapping, a member of the Royal Guard Knights of Lagrange, but few have succeeded Roland suppressed the idea of summoning out now to appreciate the power of the Paladin, but could only restrain his temper and continue marching. It's almost time for Bree, let's take a break. Roland looked at the map and compared it to Gandalf and Solindo. Okay, we can go and replenish the supplies. There won't be many places to replenish in the future, said Solon. Mr. Baggins. We can stay at the hotel tonight, and you can sleep on a soft bed instead of sleeping on the ground, Roland joked as he walked up to Bill riding a pony. Oh, really? That's really great. You don't know how rough the ground is sleeping in a tent. Bilbo complained. Ha ha ha, you have to thank Mr. Gandalf for pulling you out of the bottom hole of the warm bag, Roland said with a smile. Oh my god. I'm really obsessed, how could I agree to come out and adventure with you? Bilbo complained. That's because you have an restless heart. Gandalf suddenly spoke out. Ha ha ha, the wizard is right. Roland laughed. Roland is now very much looking forward to the Lagrange Royal Guard Paladin waiting for him in Brie. Roland has just chosen to summon, and the system has thoughtfully set which knight will be waiting for him in Brie, etc., waiting for his knight in Brie. I wipe it. It's not Aragon, that's the protagonist of the Lord of the Rings. Roland suddenly felt startled. In thought, Roland saw the outline of the town of Brie. All right, guys, we can enjoy it now. Sir, Reno, the Royal Guard Paladin of Lagrange, reports to you. A tall and handsome man with silver hair, who looks about thirty years old, loudly approached Roland. I'll wipe it. I'll wipe it. I'll wipe it. Roland now has a capital black question mark in his heart. The Royal Guard Paladin of Lagrange is very good, but let's just forget about Raymond. This knight cannot suppress himself. In the game of the Lord of the Rings, Renault is known as the presence of Raymond, and the downfall of the Lagrange Empire and the devastation of the Royal Guard Knights of Lagrange are directly related to Renault. Reno alone dominated the plot and missions of the entire northern map, leading the battles and causing the orcs to move south, directly leading to the collapse of the Raglan Empire. However, people remember his glory on the battlefield, so he was known as the Northern Dawn. Damn it, how did this troublemaker with full skill points get under his command? Can the system discuss changing people? Roland wailed in her heart. Welcome, brave paladin. Welcome to join us. Roland forced a smile to welcome the knight who had defected to him. I hope his ability to cause trouble has not been brought over. Otherwise, in the Battle of the Five Armies, adding more enemy troops would be too visually appealing. Roland thought of his friend's own enemy reinforcement buff. Renault, can your divine aura still be released? Roland suddenly remembered this most important thing. Of course, Lord. If you need it, I can release it now, Reno said respectfully. That's good. Roland let out a sigh of relief. If the holy halo of the Royal Guard Paladin of Lagrange is blocked by the system pigeon, Roland should really look for a return window. You should know that the holy halo of the Paladin is a good thing. Within a certain range, allies can increase their dual resistance, stamina, morale, vitality, and can mix holy attribute attacks in their attacks. Lei Yi, as one of the top paladins, has an aura range that can be worn by friendly forces with a radius of 500 meters from his own center. In the world of the Lord of the Rings, which lacks group boosting magic, the Holy Halo is a fun thing to do. If used well, at least its combat power will double. Lei. No. Roland almost called out as Lei Yi in excitement. Sir. Renault immediately stepped forward. Castro and Badenia archers are responsible for protecting me, and the knights are under your command. Roland waved his big hand, and the knights were thrown to Renault. 
After all, Raymond, who commanded millions of player troops in the game, was just a small deal to command a hundred man knights. Roland himself did not have a command buff. Castro is a flying dragon knight and has no experience in commanding ground knights. Renault, who has halo skills, is simply Roland's dark light, which is easy to use. Okay, Lord. May the radiance of Legrand shine on us, said Renault humbly. Chapter 7 Renault's Story You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Renault's Story Roland sighed as he looked at Renault. In fact, he felt that Renault was really a miserable person. Despite carrying everything alone, he still did not stop the fall of the Empire, and even accelerated its downfall The Lord of the Rings was originally an open-world game, in which any player's actions could potentially cause a change in the main storyline of the world. Renault's story also begins from here initially, as a dispensable NPC, Renault brought a command from the Royal Guard Paladin of Lagrange to the Northern Realm to investigate the movements of orcs, half-orcs, and other evil factions. At that time, he was discovered by the player lords with weak strength, and the enthusiasm of the lords was instantly ignited. A lonely royal guard paladin of Lagrange. It means you can flirt with him, it means you can kidnap him. As a result, Renault's reconnaissance mission was completed by a large number of fanatical lords, and under the influence of the players, Renault, who should have returned to report, stayed in the northern realm. A large number of players who hoped to recruit the Royal Guard Paladin of Lagrange gathered in the Northern Realm, crossing mountains and rivers. Under the algorithm of the main brain, Renault began to release missions. Thus, a new main storyline was created by the players. After the players regained their senses, Renault had become the Governor General of the Northern Territory. Good guy, not to mention recruiting, it can be seen that everything above is good. This is pretty good, but the most outrageous thing is that players have done a lot of tasks to gain favor, which have brought a lot of reputation to Renault. Do you know how terrifying the reputation of Renault is? Think about how much reputation hundreds of thousands of Northland players have given Renault. Someone compared the highest reputation to the former Lagrange Emperor Gary Carr, who had a reputation of 300 million. What about Raymond? With a reputation value of 700 million, even the frightened emperor bestowed upon him the title of king. However, Renault did not accept the crown of the king of the north and instead took the position of governor general of the north, commanding everything in the north. The tragedy began from this moment the Renault army, which integrated a coalition of millions of players, attacked the half-orc fortress of Gundaba, but was surrounded by various orc tribes and evil creatures in the Misty Mountains. The battle was dark and lasted for half a month, and ultimately ended in the failure of the player alliance. A large number of armies from the northern lords were completely destroyed, leaving the northern territory empty. Except for tens of thousands of NPC troops, there was almost no defense. The battle was officially named Empire Afterglow, by the game's official name and recorded in the game's chronicles. At its peak, the Lagrange Empire almost occupied the entire Loon and most of Lowanian, because of the Battle of Empire Afterglow. The impact of the war led to the rebellion of the evil camp in the Misty Mountains and the Northern Wilderness, resulting in the fall of the Lowanian region. The entire Lowanian region, except for the Elven Forest Kingdom, the Dwarf Mountain Kingdom, the Human River Valley in Lake Town, and the Rapid City where the Northern Governor General's office is located, fell completely. The entire Lagrange Empire's communication channels with the outside world were blocked, and the southern Rohan and Gondor, as well as the northern Arno, were unable to support the Lagrange Empire, under the pincer attack of evil forces in Mordor and the northern Flemish region, the Raglan Empire declared its demise. With only the area north of the Luen Inland Sea preserved and the entire country completely devastated Renault did not falter thereafter. He actively gathered NPCs and players to join forces, and under the astonishment of the world, Hoho -Ho went south. As a result, he met the Orc Alliance in the Green Leaf Forest, formerly the Dark Forest. Surprisingly, both sides started to give each other friendly greetings, but unexpectedly, the number of participants increased. Not only did human players and NPCs participate in the war, 
but also elf players, dwarf players, and orc players participated in the war. The entire Greenleaf Forest was in a state of turmoil, with countless lords destroyed and soldiers buried in bones. In the end, the war was declared a victory for the human alliance by Ray's successful occupation of Dogurdu. Now, the Kingdom of Raglan, no longer qualified to be an empire, the country is not as big as before, can finally be considered connected to the human family. After all, using teleportation arrays all day is not a problem. Now, it's good to directly border with the Golden Forest and Gundor. In theory, the matter should have ended. Now it's time to accumulate strength and reclaim territory, but... Is Lei Yi still Lei Yi who doesn't cause trouble? That's not Lei Ye's style. As a result, Lei Ye's glorious third battle. The Battle of Aiku. Broke out, and this battle was also recorded in the game's chronicle. What is the situation? The situation is like this. After Renault returned, he found that it was not easy to keep in touch with other kingdoms all day long. He thought about finding a breakthrough in the West and searched for it several times. Hey! I really found it. The old pass of the Misty Mountains. This guy sent someone to contact Rivendell and then summoned a large army to feign an attack. He and the elves sandwiched and captured the old pass. The situation is good, isn't it? But. The Greenleaf Forest has suffered again, and I don't know how many lords have been ruined. The entire Greenleaf Forest has been ruined, with the dwarves and orcs in the north, the elves, humans, and half-orcs in the south, the Lagrangian knights in the east, and the elf rangers in the west. The entire Greenleaf Forest is a mess. After finally calming down, everyone went home and had a peaceful life for two days. Lei Yi stopped working again. He looked at it and said, Oh. The orcs in the north are a bit empty. Together with the dwarves from the Lonely Mountains and the humans from the Valley States at the foot of the mountains, there is another Battle of the Five Armies, which has entered the Annals and is known as the Second Battle of the Five Armies. It's outrageous. Under Renault's leadership, the Raglan Empire transformed into a kingdom, and the Golden Forest Elves were severely weakened. The human player lords in the Greenleaf Forest were basically plowed back and forth three times, the evil faction in the Misty Mountains was defeated and made inferiority complex. The Orc Kingdom and Orc players in the north were defeated and collapsed. Why? In the Second War of the Five Armies, Renault launched another surprise attack. He didn't speak of martial arts, but he actually touched the Orc's lair and just reached the fortress of Baba. He also borrowed the head of the Orc King, of course, his body was very polite and he stayed behind, after all, he couldn't borrow too much. Following the principle of borrowing and repaying, it was not difficult to borrow again. Lei Yi also thoughtfully rushed out from behind the Orcs while everyone was burying their heads in battle. Hmm. He also led a knighthood composed of tens of thousands of people to rush out, and then raised the head of the Orc King and returned it to the Orc's army. Later, the Orcs hid their faces and fled, and Renault's army chased after them anyway, before Roland crossed over, Lei Yi was still preparing his army for battle, and it seemed like he was going to hold a big event again. Now Renault followed suit, and Roland only hopes not to hold a big event for him anymore. He's just ordering troops now and can't afford to mess around. Back in the game, when Roland was still a tall man, he had only 2,000 men under his command. After a battle in the Greenleaf Forest. His territory was all dug up. I hope it will get better tomorrow, Roland sighed quietly as she watched the sunset. Chapter 8 The Forest of Cannibals You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 The Forest of Cannibals In the early morning, everyone packed their bags and left the small town of Bree with the rising sun. Roland opened the map and couldn't help but frown as she looked at the forest on the west side of the Misty Mountains on Dongxi Avenue. Is it the Forest of Ogres? Roland couldn't help but worry. Whether in the game or in the movie, there are wandering ogres living in that area, and it is also the most important part of the Hobbit plot. 
the elven three swords reappear in glory, with Grandrin. Enemy fencing, Orklist. Beast biting sword, and Bilbo's exclusive sting. There is evil hidden in this forest. Gandalf murmured softly as he appeared next to Roland at some point. Are you ogres? Coincidentally, my knights will chop off their heads. Roland's eyes flashed with a cold light. I hope so. Gandalf gave Roland a deep glance. Chang. Roland casually pulled out the dragon slayer from her waist. Attention everyone. Stay alert. Roland raised his long sword and rode back and forth in the queue, ensuring that everyone could hear his voice. The knights silently tightened their belts, fastened their swords, and hung their cavalry guns in the most convenient position on the saddle. The knights in the front row raised their cavalry guns and scanned the surrounding dense forest with their eyes. The Badenian archers took off their secret silver bows and tied their arrows to the bowstrings. Stay alert and pay attention to the queue. Don't panic when facing danger, use your shield to block attacks from all directions, keep moving, and don't make yourself a stationary target. Renault rode to the outskirts of the team, loudly admonishing the vigilant knights. Sir, I've noticed that some knights are about to advance. Caslin suddenly noticed something and Quick Horse whispered in Roland's ear. Hmm. Roland raised her eyebrows, and the Lord of the Rings system opened. Sure enough, the battle aura level of the first ten apprentice knights under her command was approaching the knight level. Roland laughed happily. Although apprentice knights are also knights, in the end, knights still sound much better than apprentice knights, with much stronger combat power, and there are also some good skills at the knight level that apprentice knights cannot compare to. Compared to novice knights, knights have several more practical skills, such as shield wall, which condenses a large amount of combat energy into a shield and forms a light shield in front of them, measuring 2 meters in length and 1 meter in width. A shield needs to be equipped. Sword Reversal After successfully blocking an enemy attack, you can immediately launch a slashing attack. The slashing aura comes with armor-piercing function and requires sword weapons to be equipped. Flash Sword Summons a long sword with condensed combat energy to descend from the sky, dealing scorching damage upon hitting the enemy with an attack range of 10 meters. Castro gave you a task, Roland's eyes rolled. Sir, I am always at your command, Castro hurriedly said. You should be able to teach them skills, Roland whispered. Of course, the Flying Dragon Knight has a lot of skills that are common to ordinary knights, Castro said in a low voice, taken aback. Then you're responsible for teaching them their skills, Roland quickly patted his shoulder. What? Castro immediately raised his black question mark face. We don't have a career mentor here, can you please take care of it? Renault still has to lead the team, so this task is up to you. Roland patted his shoulder and urged. Sir, can I be considered a forced laborer? Caslo covered his face. Cough, this is called those who are capable work harder, Roland said without blushing or beating her heart. Soren, we need to be careful when we come down. Tell your dwarf brothers that our whereabouts may have been exposed, and the orcs may have been watching us. Roland found Soren. What? Solon exclaimed in surprise. It's not easy to walk down this forest, the hidden ogres inside won't let us easily pass through, Roland sighed helplessly as she looked at everyone. You should know that in the forest of ogres, there are not only the three ogres in the movie, but also many hidden ogres. Don't worry, Your Excellency, I will keep everyone vigilant at all times, Solon replied after pondering for a moment. I hope so. At night, by the campfire, Bahrain still told Bilbo the story of Sorin and the pale half orc Azak, as Roland knew. So what happened later? What about the orc? Bilbo couldn't help but say. Dead. He died from a serious injury in a pitch black cave. Sorin walked over with a cold face. Rest early, we still have to hurry tomorrow, Roland walked over. Sleep, sleep. Bilbo quickly spread out his blankets and lay by the warm campfire, 
while Roland walked to his marching tent to rest. The tent was large and could accommodate ten fully armed knights to rest. Roland and set up thirteen tents, one for Roland, one for Castro, and one for Renault, one for the other ten, and the other ten to watch the night. Damn it! Someone's missing. In a daze, Roland heard someone shouting. I wipe it. It's so special. I forgot about the plot of the cannibal attack these past few nights. Roland, a carp, stood up and pulled out his dragon slaying sword as he walked out of the tent. What's the situation? Roland grabbed Oli and asked. Bilbo and Chili are missing. Oli panicked. Reno. Wake up everyone. Prepare for battle. Roland shouted loudly. Sorin. Your people are really causing trouble. Roland said helplessly. Wait, where did you tie the horse? Roland suddenly realized, as if in the plot they had let the cannibal demon out of the horse tie forest. Chile and Philly tied their horses in the forest, Devlin suddenly said. Go and see if the horse is here. Roland hurriedly said. Someone quickly ran over, and soon Bahrain ran over. No more. What a special thing. At least a dozen ogres. Roland felt a headache. Knights. Gather. Roland shouted. Help. Help. Suddenly, Philly ran out of the bushes, crawling and rolling. Cannibals. They caught Bilbo and stole our pony. Lead the way. Renault said coldly. Oh, come with me. Felix was stunned for a moment and quickly realized. I'll definitely tear you into pieces and dip you in sauce to eat when I catch you, roared a three or four meter tall ogre. Below, Bilbo and Chili kept dodging the large hand extended by the ogre. Haven't these two little mice been caught yet? How should these horses eat well? I think it should be eaten raw. Let's stew the soup and eat it. I also have some squirrel droppings to season. Hmm. How did I hear the sound of horse hooves? It's a bit like the sound of human heavy cavalry hooves. A cannibal demon who was burning a fire suddenly looked up at the swaying trees in the distance, puzzled. For the glory of knights. Charge. Kill. For justice. For the revival of Lagrange. This is Renault. In an instant, a torrent of steel rushed out of the bushes, and rows of cavalry guns emitting a cold light stood like bushes. Iron cans smashed all obstacles ahead and pushed them up. The ogre chasing Bilbo and Chi Li was instantly knocked over by a cavalry, and the knight behind raised his cavalry gun and hit it, feeling the huge resistance in his hand. The knight frowned and immediately released his cavalry gun, and picked up the fighting hoe with his back hand. Taking advantage of passing by, he hoed and rammed it up. Ah! The ogre howled in pain. Unfortunately, before it could howl for long, it was engulfed by a torrent of steel, and under the constant glow of the night's torches, only the ground was covered in a paste of minced meat. Chapter 9 The Three Swords of Elves in the Present World You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9 the three swords of elves in the present world accompanied by the charge of the knights, Roland felt a surge of passion, as if a familiar BGM was ringing. Perhaps the first Starsky would be very fitting. Kill. Roland roared as he removed the left calf of a cannibal with a sword. The massive body of the cannibal fell to the ground and was mercilessly trampled by its iron hooves. Shoot, the Badenian archer snapped. Skill. Sprint. Activate. Ben Shootout is a very practical skill that can greatly improve shooting accuracy while running and riding horses. Shoo. A steel arrow shot into the ogre's eye socket, and the ogre immediately covered its injured eyes, howling and circling in place. Its pain was soon over, and two knights lifted it high with their cavalry guns, then threw it aside and rolled it a few times before losing its breath. Kill. The golden aura of war covered the entire body, and the divine light spread out, just like Renault, 
who had been poured with gold, wielded a cavalry gun and collided head-dot-on with the ogre. Suddenly, a strong aura of war erupted, and the ogre was directly blown to pieces. Black blood and tissue danced wildly in the sky, while Renault remained as sacred and noble as before. Behind him, a knight named Lagrange waved his weapon and followed the steel torrent pouring down the way, damn it. These dirty guys. Roland cursed as she looked at her foot trapped in an unknown organization. Damn it, this foot can't be taken anymore. Roland almost died of nausea. Sir, let me charge for you. Castro eagerly picked up the water bag and ran over. Don't. Stop. Vomit. Roland was covered in unidentified objects splashed up by Castro's rushing and mud mixed with rotten blood. I'm going to kill you. Kill you. Roland went crazy. Purification. A golden light flashed by, and the stain on Roland's body dissipated with the flushing of the golden light. Oh. What a luxury. Purification is used to clean up stains for oneself. The total amount of Lei Ye's combat energy is a bit rich. The Cannibal Rebellion. Reached. Rewards Holy War Chi, can be converted to Paladin. Issued. Roland was about to speak when a divine aura suddenly erupted from the bottom of his heart, causing him to hold back his words. The golden aura of war surged and Roland felt an unprecedented strength, even his skills changed. God bless Lagrange. Congratulations to Lord for successfully awakening the paladin. Reno exclaimed excitedly, feeling that there was hope for the revival of the empire at this moment. The system implanted them with the memory of the decline of the Lagrange Empire, and Renault was the only remaining Lagrange Lord, Paladin. Gandalf exclaimed in surprise. You know, not everyone can be a Paladin. In history, Paladins and Black Knights were a pair. Where did Black Knights come from? That's what a Paladin looks like. The birth of a Paladin can benefit one side, but it also lays a hidden danger for destroying the other. It's interesting now that there are actually two paladins among the over a hundred people. I can't help but fall into depravity. Let's just go JJ and don't go on an expedition. Just pull your luggage and you can run away. Paladins are hard to kill. Holy magic and skills are constantly emerging, and you can't kill them at all. You can't beat them as fast as he can, and the Black Knight is even more difficult. He can not only milk him, but also suck blood back to blue and red Gandalf took a deep look at the two of them and quietly wiped away his cold sweat. For the first time, he felt that organizing an expedition to Lonely Mountain was a mistake. As a wizard who had gained divinity, he had lived for thousands of years and had never seen anything. The nine ring spirits under Sauron's command were particularly black knights. When the number one ring spirit, the Angmar Witch King, ravaged the Arnold Kingdom, it was a devastating event. The ogre cannot appear during the day, Gandalf said as he looked at the rising sun. That proves there must be a cave nearby. Solon's eyes lit up. Everyone search. Roland said loudly while riding on the warhorse. Soon someone discovered the cave of the ogre nearby, and everyone quickly followed suit. I'll wipe it. The smell in this place is so fresh, it really gets on my head. Roland covered her nose and almost melted. Oh, look what I found. Groen walked out holding a small box. Wow. It's all gold coins. Nori exclaimed in surprise. Oh, there's still a bunch scattered here. These ogres really don't know how to cherish them, Roland said with a smack of her tongue. Put them all away quickly, Roland's face lit up with joy. Ha! Huh. Gandalf let out a soft moan and walked up to a pile of weapons covered in spider webs, gently teasing them with his staff. Chang! The crisp sound of the long sword unsheathed sounded, and a silver light shone brightly under the torches, dazzling people's eyes. I'll wipe it! enemy swords. Ragnd Rin, Roland exclaimed. He had been searching for the elf three swords for a while and wanted to find them. Although they couldn't compare to the dragon-slaying sword, 
even collecting them would be good. As a result, Roland and this sword really have no fate. Hmm. Do you know each other? Gandalf exclaimed in surprise. Nonsense. Gondul and Forest King's sword, Roland said casually without even thinking. Hmm. Gandalf gave Roland a deep glance without speaking, and casually drew another sword. Puff. What a beast biting sword. Octrist. Roland's face turned black. Among the three elven swords, Roland was attracted to these two, after all, Lord Baggins' exclusive stab in Roland's hand was no different from a bread knife, too short. But Comrade Gandalf still flipped them out like history did. Roland's face turned black, and he waved his big hand to command his subordinates to move all their weapons away. Although there was suspicion of shamelessness, the short knife that stabbed and acted as a self-defense was still quite useful. As for face. Put it in your pocket for now. Dwarf brothers, do you want to change clothes? These weapons are forged by the Nolder elves and are very good. Roland kindly reminded. No. Let's get out of this filthy place. Upon hearing the weapons of the elves, Thorin immediately exploded and turned his head, leading his men away. Gandalf shrugged and said helplessly, Solon, this is a beast-biting sword. This is the best weapon we can get now. He looked deeply at Solon. Thorin pondered for a moment, then looked up at the secret silver hammer on the knights carrying weapons, the precious gold weapons and armor of Roland and the others. He swallowed his saliva, but ultimately did not escape the law of true fragrance. He obediently took the weapon, and the remaining dwarves happily ran to the pile of weapons to pick it up, just like the mothers buying groceries in the market. Bilbo. Here you are. Gandalf, who emerged from the hole, handed Bilbo a short sword. Roland looked at it and almost lost his breath. I even managed to empty my command and didn't stop you from grabbing the elf three swords. How unlucky am I to be with these three weapons? Can't I, as a member of the Lord of the Rings, collect some famous swords? Roland muttered in fragments, her mind filled with the words unlucky. No, I can't take it. In fact, I have never used a sword or weapon before. Bilbo waved his hand in panic and refused. Baggins, this is a magical weapon forged by elves, and the blade emits a dim blue light when the orcs approach. Gandalf introduced. I hope you can never use it. But when you come in handy, remember that the true meaning of courage is not in taking a person's life, but in forgiving it. Chapter 10 Shadows you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Shadows Scream Suddenly, a sound came from the distant bushes, and several Ba bows raised their bows and arrows in their hands. Ah! Great fire! Death! Murderer! A figure riding a sled pulled by more than ten rabbits rushed out. Ridigast! Gandalf saw the person coming and quickly waved to let everyone down their weapons. Brown-robed wizard Ridegast. He should be a high-dot-level wizard like Gandalf, right? Roland thought to himself, because Middle-earth in this world doesn't have Villa or Maya, Roland really can't understand the level of the brown-robed wizard at the bottom of the original work. Don't be nervous, everyone. This is the brown-robed wizard Ridegast, Gandalf introduced to everyone. Ridegast, how could you be here? Gandalf asked curiously. I'm looking for you, Green Forest is sick. Ridegast whispered mysteriously. Hmm. Gandalf looked at him in confusion. Um. Indeed, as Roland knew, the poor Ridegast forgot what he was going to say again. Suddenly, Roland's face changed and she immediately turned her head to look around at the scenery. Sure enough, Ridegast opened his mouth and pulled out a bamboo worm from his mouth, oh, the knight who saw this scene immediately vomited. Even the neurotic dwarf twitched at the corners of his eyes, and Bilbo immediately changed his face, his face turning blue and purple. Roland was glad she didn't see the scene of the meal, otherwise her eyes would have been in trouble. Ha! 
It's a bamboo worm. Rydegast finally exclaimed happily. Ugh. The knights who had just restrained their constantly rolling stomach juice couldn't hold back anymore. The green forest is sick, darkness covers the earth, everything stops growing, the air is filled with a foul smell, and the worst is those nets. Net. What net? Gandalf exclaimed in surprise. It's spiders. The big ones, I can be sure they are descendants of Angolan. I followed them all the way and found out they came from Togo. Rydegast said seriously. Dul Gordo. The old fortress. Gandalf exclaimed in surprise. That place has long been abandoned. Gandalf said. No. No. A necromancer was lurking there. Rydegast began to recall, his voice filled with fear. Hey. Take a sip of old Toby tobacco, it can help you calm down. Gandalf handed over his pipe. Looking at Rydegast Gandalf, who took a deep breath, he said, Can you be sure now that he is the necromancer? Dot. Rydegast didn't speak but took out a cloth bag from his pocket. This is by no means a weapon from the human world, he affirmed. Gandalf opened his cloth bag with a bitter face, and his face suddenly changed. He was about to speak, ow. What is that? Are there wolves in this forest? Bilbo asked curiously. Special. The whole army is on guard. It's a wolf. Roland's face changed. Bang. Renault drew his long sword. Roar. A majestic figure leaped out of the shadow, and this time the wolf was clearly stronger than what Roland had encountered before. Death. Castro raised his spear and prepared to throw it. The vigilant Badenian archer was faster than him, and a sharp arrow instantly penetrated the wolf's eye. Damn it. Wolf Scout. Gandalf's face changed dramatically. We're being hunted. The orc army is nearby. Roland panicked. Ah. A knight was knocked down by a wolf, luckily his teammate beside him was reliable, and with one sword, he chopped off the wolf's head. Get out of the woods. Roland forced herself to calm down. Sir. How should we go? Renault came to Roland's side at this moment. Gandalf. Take us to Rivendell. Roland shouted. This way. Gandalf quickly pointed the way. Why go to Rivendell? Do you think those damn elves will help us? Thorin angrily said. My friend, if you want to be submerged by the torrent of orcs, then do it yourself. The bloodline of Turin will end today. I will not bury you with the Knights of Lagrange. Roland said coldly. If you think thirteen dwarves can fight against the army of orcs, then you can do it yourself. Knights. Let's go. Roland charged out with a wave of horses. Solon should feel lucky, after all, in the original work they lost all the ponies, and now at least they still have transportation tools. Sure enough, following the principle that heroes do not suffer immediate losses, Soren eventually led people to follow up. Gandalf. Take them with you. Let's stay and cut off the line. Otherwise, no one can leave. Roland shouted. Get out of here. All the Badenian archers follow orders. Follow them and protect their safety. Roland said, turning his horse's head. Brothers of the Holy Knights, let's go to the plain. Roland called out to the knights to charge towards the plain beside him. Sure enough, the army of orcs was attracted and they didn't notice the departure of that small group of people at all. No. Solon sat on his horse and said in pain. Let's go back and save them. At this moment, Solon was not yet affected by the curse of Lonely Mountain, and he was still the dwarf who was extremely loyal to his friends. Come back. They paid a huge price for us to leave. We cannot let them down. Gandalf stopped his foolish behavior. We should look for elves, said a Badenian archer. This place is very close to Rivendell, 
and there should be elf cavalry and rangers guarding around, analyzed another Badenian archer. Yeah, we should seek help from King Elon. Gandalf's gaze penetrated into the distance. Line up. Line up. Roland stopped the warhorses and let them rest for a moment. I'll leave it to you to command. Roland said to Renault. Yes, sir. Renault took on the task with great concern. Don't worry, Castro will always support us. Roland patted his shoulder with a relaxed expression on his face. Leaving everyone's sight means that Roland's strongest combat power can be fully unleashed, and the Flying Dragon Knight is an inexplicable presence for the Orc Wolf Cavalry chasing dwarves. You don't know, do you? Castro is a Flying Dragon Knight, the kind with flying dragons, Roland asked as he looked at Renault with a bewildered expression on his face. Um. No one really told me. After speaking, Renault took a deep look at Castro. It's not fair to look at him. This handsome guy has a dragon in his pocket. No wonder Lord Roland didn't panic at all, and even supported the others. Ow. Roar. The chaotic wolf cavalry appeared in the sight of Roland and others, about two to three hundred wolf cavalry. I'll wipe it. Is that all? Roland almost spat out. Ah, he 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 he, Reno, who had a nervous expression, chuckled at the moment. This. Castro covered his face. Scaring everyone half to death, the half-orc who fled in despair was only so human. Roland, Renault, and Castro all covered their faces. How embarrassing. Telling others that a knightly order had scared three hundred orcs and wolf cavalry out of the plain from the forest, and even prepared to launch a flying dragon to fight. Roland glanced around and saw no outsiders, great. Otherwise, we can consider the matter of sealing the mouth. Little ones. Build him. The soul of the mountain king instantly possessed Roland too, shouting slogans and riding his horse with a gun. Knights. Charge. Renault blushed and ordered the knights to activate their charge skill. The horses charged out with neat steps, and from the sky, under Renault's command, one hundred apprentice knights played a highly challenging wall charge. Riding like a wall. Reno shouted. Bang. In the next moment, the steel wall slammed heavily onto the half-orc. Congratulations to the host for successfully starting the main mission. Lonely Mountain Expedition. Unlock check that I end function. You can sign in once a day to receive various random rewards. Just as the battle ended, a light curtain jumped out in front of Roland's eyes. I was so special. I always thought your broken ring was dead. So I only found the main storyline now. Roland became increasingly sad and angry as she thought about it. She thought this system was just a reward system for brushing achievements, and thought she had figured out how to use it. Who knew that now someone told her that she didn't even open the real page, sign in. Roland signed for his first time with a dark face. Successful check that I in. Congratulations to the host for obtaining 90 Badenian archers. I'm going. Can I understand the system as you're preparing troops for my upcoming Lord of the Rings battle? Roland said, this system is really cute. Because the Battle of the Five Armies excluded interference from other players, Roland laughed out loud, the Orc Coalition only had 30,000 people, the Dwarves had 500 people, the Elves had 3,000 people, and there were hundreds of humans. It can be said that Roland was simply crushing the straw on the camel. It's no longer straw, it can be called sugarcane. With the daily accumulation of Char Warhorse rewards, Roland can fully arm these ninety Badenian archers and use them as heavy cavalry. From this, it can be seen that the two hundred fully armed mobile forces, along with a halo paladin and a flying dragon knight, with the cooperation of the coalition, can completely defeat the orcs. A certain author shamelessly came to request a recommendation ticket Omega, book lovers who have tickets, don't be stingy. Use the tickets to whip me to the heart's content.